Our group chose the Daimler Chrysler merger, and you will see how it was a colossal failure. <coughs> this acquisition ranks in the top five all time worst mergers. Chrysler, as you know, was a publicly held giant in American industry and one of Detroit's big three. Daimler, obviously, to make our Mercedes Benz, their merger was the biggest cross border swap, uh, stock swap of all time. It was $38 billion. However, the deal eventually blew up in both of their faces. Chrysler shareholders filed a class action suit that cost the German CEO his job, and Chrysler sold off in 2007 for $7.4 billion. The knuckleheads who bought them ended up going broke within two years and was eventually bailed out by none other than your taxpayer dollars. The automotive in industry at the time had three saturated markets. There was the US, Europe, and Japan. <coughs> Car sales plateaued, and there were no emerging markets at the time. The perception was that only global companies would succeed. Therefore, con consolidation was likely to happen somewhere and that somewhere was none other than Daimler Chrysler. Did you know that Henry Ford did not make the first car? Carl Benz created the world's first car in the 1800, late 1800s, and this is what it looked like. It was a three-wheeled motor carriage. Since then, Daimler has been known for quality, safety, and comfort. Whereas Chrysler is not a white collar company, they are more of a blue collar that's focused on cost, being cost conscious. In 1997, one out of every six car in the United States was none other than a blank. Audience fill in the blank. Chevrolet. Ford. Chrysler. 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 You got it. The next year, Forbes magazine named what company company of the year? Chrysler. Chrysler. <laughs> what company sound like a strong company? Chrysler. 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 Yeah, so this deal <laughs> made sense, right? Well, it did according to both CEOs. Both companies were ideal complements. Their merger would enable them to compete in virtually every market they would be able to offer a vehicle ranging from $11,000 all the way to a six-figure Mercedes-Benz. They were combining the two most innovative companies in the world to create the world's leading automaker for the 21st century. However, their stock has never quite recovered. Chrysler's rationale for doing this deal was they wanted entry into the European market they were tired of living in the shadows of these two. Daimler wanted to expand into the United States. Both companies wanted global market power. They wanted to synergize to become the world's leading car maker and gain from the expected benefits of merging. Now terms of the deal is where it gets interesting. Both CEOs bragged how this is going to be a 50-50 merger, but when you look at the numbers, you tell me who's the big dog. Benz had 58% stake, whereas Chrysler had a 42% stake. Benz, or Daimler, Daimler Benz would get one new share for every share that they had, whereas Chrysler would get 0.6235 new shares for every share that they had. So what was interesting Beyond this was there was no goodwill reported on the books because it, it was legal to, or that they could get away with that at the time. Another interesting thing is that they kept two headquarters, one in Germany and one in Detroit. However, the company would be um, follow a German structure. 
because the main headquarters was in Germany. And both executives promised no layoffs or plant closings. And this was a very sen sensitive subject in the Midwest where I was living at the time because many people had families, in fact, generations of families that worked for Ford or GM or Chrysler. So this was met with a re repudiated skepticism and resistance. <laughs> that was a good word, dude. Uh, so, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Justin the Toastmasters here. Um, so that was how the, the Midwest reacted. How did the stock market react? Initially, it reacted favorably. Daimler went up 4.5% and the Chrysler stock jumped 31% in just two days. Whereas a year later, the stock dropped 15% while the market went up 19% that year. So they end up losing $10 billion market capitalization, whereas they first gained $10 billion. So how has the stock done since then? It just kept going down past the 50%. So it kept going and going and going before turning around. And it grew until Chrysler spun off. Then the market tanked, or not the market, this stock tanked, and then it, it crawled all the way up until 2014 before retracing again. And at this point, I'm gonna pass the baton over to Hannah to show you even more ways in which this merger was a colossal failure. 